Hey there, welcome back to The Truth is Somewhere, a conspiracy theory podcast. Megan, what are we talking about today? Today we are going to talk about the Queen Mary and her various hauntings. Uh, This topic was requested by Michael Harris in our Facebook group, and you guys can join the Facebook group and request topics by searching for TTIS Podcast Group on Facebook. Um, Just a housekeeping note, there are questions you'll need to answer in order to be led in the group. If you get the second question wrong, that's okay. If you're a new listener, there's a chance you have not yet realized that Corey doesn't believe in ghosts, but I do. And if you don't at least attempt to answer the questions, I won't let you in because I've had a few of those lately. So just wanted to throw that out there before I get started. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that we should note is that we are recording from separate locations this week. So if things sound a little different, it's because we are not in the same room as we usually are. And I'm really bummed because I'm not going to get to see Corey's facial expressions. Yeah, normally we're sitting side by side talking to the same mic, but uh, this time it's a little bit different. Yep. So hopefully everything's going good. We did some tests. Everything seemed to be okay. Welcome to it. Thanks for being here. I'm going to yeah. jump right in. All right, let's do it. Uh, I'm going to start by talking about the history of the Queen Mary. So she okay. was built to be bigger, faster, and more powerful than the Titanic. Okay. And uh, they started building her in 1930, but they faced delays during the Depression. And they finally finished her, and she took her maiden voyage on May 27th, 1936. She spent the next three years as a grand ocean liner that ferried the rich and famous across the Atlantic. So she has a better track record already than the Titanic. Yes, because she actually made it across on her maiden voyage. Um, Guests on the ship included the Duke and Duchess of Windsor and Sir Winston Churchill, among others. Mm -hmm. And the Queen Mary was considered by the rich as the only civilized way to travel, and she held the record for the fastest ever North Atlantic crossing. Oh, boy. Yeah, right? So in 1939, World War II stepped on luxurious travel, and the Queen Mary was converted to a troop ship and was called the Grey Ghost. Oh. And I know. During World War II, her total capacity increased from 2,410 to 5,500, and she ended up carrying more than 800,000 troops and traveled more than 600,000 miles over the course of the war. Okay. And she set the record for carrying the most people ever on a floating vessel at 16,683 people. Wow. Right? Is that, that is, nuts? That is a lot. Um, sounds like uh, sounds like the ship has had quite the uh, quite the adventurous life. Yeah, it, it has had quite the adventurous life. I'm actually going to tell you a crazy story about its adventurous life during the war. Okay, and I bet you're also going to tell me about all the ghosts that live on it. I am going to tell you about the ghosts that live on it. Okay. Okay. So it's October of 1942. Okay. And the Grey Ghost is carrying 10,000 troops across the Atlantic. Um, it was very normal for ships in those days to travel in a zigzag pattern to avoid detection of German U-boats. Makes sense. So she's traveling along at 28 knots in a zigzag pattern. It's pretty quick. She's hauling ass. Yeah, she's hauling ass. Mm-hmm. Um, she is accompanied by a much smaller vessel called the HMS Curacao. Okay. And uh, that was an anti-aircraft ship. So it provided anti-aircraft cover for the Grey Ghost. That makes sense, because I would imagine the Grey Ghost wouldn't have much in the line of defense. No, she was basically a car- used as a cargo ship. She, was a- yeah. she ferried people. That's what she did. Right, it probably had a couple of turrets strapped on the top of it but i mean unless you can unless you have a perfect sharpshooter on the top taking out any aircraft that gets anywhere near it even then the aircraft is going to be uh shooting it down shooting at it before you can shoot uh your turret at it anyway so yeah i could see why it would need an escort so it has this escort it's a much 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 smaller step ship um and the curacao's engines were struggling to keep up with the gray ghost Mm -hmm. and then the curacao's captain made a super fatal error okay and he chose not to zigzag oh and crossed in front of the gray ghost and the gray ghost was doing 28 knots and obviously Uh couldn't like change their direction fast enough Mm mm-hmm and neither could the curacao so the gray ghost literally cut the curacao in two 
Oh, wow. And then the order was that because of the U-boats and because it was a time of war, that they had to just keep going. Sure. So the Gregos couldn't even stop and, like, help rescue the people from the Curacao. Like, they just had to keep going in their zigzag pattern. That's tough. To avoid detection. That's and real so, tough. Yeah. Uh, the Curacao sank in less than six minutes, and 239 of its 338 crew died. Yeah. Yeah. It's horrible. I know. It's really awful, right? It's just yeah. the fucking worst. Um, but the Grey Ghost did a whole lot more than just uh, friendly fire, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> she was involved in almost every major Allied campaign during the war, okay. including the D-Day invasion. Wow. Yeah, right? And at the close of the war, she became a transport ship for the bride and baby voyages, uh-huh. uh, transporting 22,000 war brides to the U.S. and Canada during 13 trips in 1946. That's awesome. And if you don't know what a war bride is, because um, I actually had to look it up because I had never heard that term. Uh-huh. So what it is, is um, over the course of the war, because it lasted so long, American and Canadian soldiers were... Um, they met women while they were in Europe and they fell in love with women and they married women and they made families. Mm -hmm. And so the war brides were these women who got married to soldiers during the war and needed to come to America to be with their soldiers after the war was over. Yeah. I I'd actually heard of that, but um, it's, it's a good bit of knowledge to spread. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that was the last little bit she did for the war efforts was bringing over those uh, women and, and children uh-huh. to reunite them with uh, their husbands That's pretty great. and their fathers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now the war is over and the Grey Ghost is refurbished and becomes the Queen Mary again. Okay. And she's refurbished to her former glory to look exactly the way that she was before. That's pretty good. That's great. Yeah. Kind of like a... Um, oh, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then she began carrying the elite on glamorous cruises once again in July of 1947. Uh-huh. She kept a weekly service between Southampton, Cherbourg, and New York um, okay. until the early 1960s. But at that time, in the early 60s, air travel was becoming more affordable and more people began to use flight for transatlantic travel. That makes it's sense. a lot faster, frankly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and in 1963, the Queen Mary started occasional cruises to the Canary Islands and the Bahamas. But unfortunately, she wasn't equipped with air conditioning or outdoor pools as her modern day tropical competition were. Sure, sure. So in 1967, she was withdrawn from service. Uh, okay, okay. So at that time, she had over 1,000 transatlantic crossings. At, uh, and later that year... She was sold for $3.45 million to the city of Long Beach, California. Wow. That's a pretty decent was, price back then. Right? That's like, that's a big ship. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was docked in Long Beach permanently and became a floating museum and luxury hotel. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's a little history of the Queen Mary. And I mean, now we're going to talk about why we're talking about a cruise ship on this podcast. I mean, the same reason that we talked about hotels, I would imagine. Yep. Yeah, uh, I mean, I would just like to say uh, Queen Mary sounds like a badass. Right? No kidding. Uh, badass. Yeah, that that ship has accomplished a shit ton. I mean, obviously, it's the people on the ship that really did it, but, like, just really goes to show that uh, quality trumps quantity. Sure. Yeah, like, I mean, I uh, I definitely don't believe in, like, the spirit of a ship or the spirit of a thing, um, but I, for one, am not, uh, I, for one, can't say that I've never personified something, um, and I definitely can see the personification of this ship, and I think ships are pretty common, Heck, we call them she, usually. Um, so I could see it kind of, you know, having this long legacy in it being what did it. Yeah. 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 So 
The Queen Mary is haunted. Uh huh. I and of course it is. Yes. Some people even say she's one of the most haunted places in the world. Oh. Mm hmm. She has as many as 150 known spirits. And the past 60 years have seen 49 reported deaths on the ship. And you add that to the fact that she participated in war, and it's pretty much a no-brainer that she'd have ghosts, if you believe in that sort of thing. Like, that's just, like, a recipe for ghosts. Sure. Um, so, a lot of paranormal activity takes place in Queen Mary's engine room. Okay. Uh, the room's door number 13 has crushed at least two men to death. Okay. Uh, the most recent death was an 18-year-old crew member who was crushed during a routine watertight door drill in 1966. I'm going to just add a thing, because what I read was that he was crushed during this routine door drill, but then there's also a rumor that um, he and another crew member were, like, playing basically a game of chicken with the door. Okay. To see who could get through it first before it closed. Or last, like the the person at the last second who could get through it before it closed. Sure, that makes caught. sense. So, the thing that I read about, like the routine watertight door drill, is that he was crushed. But if you like the rumors about him playing this game of chicken, he was severed in two. So I kind of tend to think that it was probably more crushed during a door drill. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Why? Why do you think it's that and not him playing chicken? Because the ones about him playing chicken say he was severed in two. Uh, well, okay. So you're saying that because that story gets goes a little bit more extreme, that it's a little less believable? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay, I could see that. I don't know. I don't know the force behind those doors, but I imagine that doors like that are designed to shut even if something's in the way of it. Well, yeah, that is true, because it's supposed to be watertight. Yeah, and I hate to say it, but in that sort of situation, that door should close whether there's a person in the way or not. It's true. You're right, because if the ship's sinking... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, seriously. But, again, I don't know anything about those doors. Um, so, I couldn't, I couldn't say one way or the other, but I could say that it... I, for me, I don't think uh, someone being severed in half makes it any less plausible. Okay, uh, that's fair. Yeah. The other one was supposedly crushed by the door during a fire. He was trying to get out. Yeah, and doors like that shut during fires, too, so... Yeah. Um, so he was trying to get out because the engine room was on fire, and he was crushed by the door. So you said the last person that died was in 1966? That was crushed by a door. Oh, the last person that was crushed was by a door yes. was in 1966, but not the last person to yeah. die on the ship. I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Um, but the, the one in, in 1966 who was crushed by the door, um, people ha have reported seeing him. Like, he looks like he did in the photographs. Mm. Um, two? Huh? In two? No, not in two. Well, come on the photographs when he was alive. They oh, see okay. him um, walking the length of the hallway that provides access to the ship's propeller shafts. Okay. Um, and as he's walking down that, he just disappears at door 13. Mm -hmm. Was that the And door he's, like, wearing blue coveralls. Yeah, door 13 was the one that killed him. Okay. Uh-huh. Huh. So... A quick Google search tells me that somebody died in 2011. Okay. 2011. Was... That c oh. There could be something more recent than that, but that's like the quickest. Sure, sure. That's uh, that's still pretty recent, though, I'd say. Yeah. Much more recent than 1966. Sure. I was just specifically talking about the door crushing incident of 1966. Duh. I mean, gosh, that wasn't even, that wasn't even in our century. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Um, the ship's boiler room, uh, no longer has boilers in it. They've long since been removed. Uh, -huh. uh but it also plays host to agonized screams and the sound of tearing metal, which some believe are the men of the Curacao. Ooh, I want to uh, hear that. Because the troops aboard the Great Ghost reported hearing the screams of the crew on the Curacao as they continued on their journey after the collision. 
Oh, I'm sure they did. I mean, and unless it was fucking horrible. Unless it was like, drowned out by the engines. Uh, ooh. And when yeah, I say I, I want to hear that, like, because I think if I actually would hear that, I might believe something. Right. I get uh, what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, ooh, I want to hear that because if it's real, I actually want to hear it. I know it's horrible, but that would be the okay. Maybe I believe in this. Uh, I also really want to hear it because I don't think that's actually a sound that people really hear with their ears. I see what you're saying. I get it. But okay. Um, two other hot spots on the ship are the first and second class swimming pools. Huh. Um, neither pool is used for swimming today, but the spirits don't really seem to realize that. Oh. The first class swimming pool has been closed for decades, but women are often seen wearing 1930s style swimsuits walking the decks near the pool. Okay. And then the sounds of splashing and the appearance of wet footprints are also reported between the deck and the changing rooms. Okay. And there is a little girl who plays hide and seek around the first class pool, and sometimes you'll see like her wet footprints running um, into the changing rooms as well. Okay. And then there's another little girl at the second class pool that people say drowned during a sailing. There's um, no recorded drownings on the ship, but researchers and paranormal investigators have captured the girl's voice and laughter on recording. Oh. And the little girl is only known as Jackie. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I mean, when there's no recorded deaths... And then all of a sudden you have people saying, no, there was one. We have the recording of their spirits. I just kind of, I'm like, you are like trying to find something that just isn't there. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, even uh, if the excuse was more along the lines of someone died at it at the port and the spirit has found its way to the ship i don't know maybe maybe uh that's that's a little too fantastic but it all is it is it is a little fantastic you're right it is um the original first class dining room is now referred to as the queen's salon Okay. And it is a 4,600 square foot room decorated in yellows and bronze and boasts beautiful imported woods, polished marble floors, a parquet dance floor, and three golden fireplaces. Golden? Uh, wow. Yep. I know. The room is extravagant and is a beautiful example of the Art Deco style of her time period. And the room contains a stylized map, you're going to love this, mm-hmm. of the ship's transatlantic path both to and from England. And the path even contains a tiny crystal ship that displayed the current placement of the ship on that path. Oh, that is really cool. So, like, the first class diners could come and have dinner uh-huh. and then, like, see where they were on their trip. That's pretty cool. Isn't that cool? That is way cool, yeah. Yeah. Just, did someone uh, just come up and update it or what? That or I it... didn't get. I think that somebody must have, like, had to have done it manually. I would imagine, like, every every hour or so, the ship would be moved. Yeah, that's what I would think, too. That there was just some poor schmuck whose job it was to move the little crystal sh- ship. Yeah, I mean, I imagine it wasn't just some poor schmuck. It was probably, uh, like, it was probably the navigator and his aide. It was their job to go, you know, every hour, check it and move it. Yeah. So, so yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Um. And this room plays host to a ghost dubbed the Woman in White. Mm -hmm. And she can be seen gliding across the floor in a long white gown and dancing. And paranormal investigators describe her as a residual haunting, which is something that's basically just an energy loop that isn't aware of its surroundings. So it's not like a ghost that's haunting something on purpose. It's just like a, a piece of energy of a person that is just stuck Oh, but it's not, like, actually the spirit. But it's not, like, yeah, it's not actually it's the It's, like, spirit. a piece it's, of the spirit. It's the essence of the spirit. Yeah, that doesn't uh. know what's surrounding it, doesn't know what's there, doesn't, like, it's not interacting with anything. It's just going through mm-hmm. this repetitive motion. 
Sure. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd like that one. Hey, you know, maybe we could just dis- we will describe it as um the ship has some sort of uh time fluctuation on it and it's just replaying a woman actually just dancing right there well i actually almost think it's more believable to have like this um energy that's stuck in a loop than it is to believe that like a spirit that is like sentient is stuck somewhere i guess but then why don't we just see like magical rocks falling from places over and over again because they're stuck in a energy loop i don't know i don't know either that's what i'm asking I'm just saying, I just think that it could be considered a little more believable than, like, sentient beings. I guess. I kind of get it. Being stuck and trapped. My, I always come down to the the thought of, like, everything is relative, and while we look at that ship and we're like, oh, it's been docked in the same place for however long, you know, 50, 60 years, uh, sure, fine, it's been in the same place. I say that with some heavy quotations because... The Earth is spinning and moving around the sun, and the sun is moving in around the galaxy, and we're moving at, like, thousands of miles an hour. Nothing is in the same place anymore, so what's keeping that energy loop stuck there and not there. in some place okay. random in space? I, not even random, some calculated uh, place in space. See what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. I, it makes logical sense. That's saying. my problem with time travel, too. Like, oh, we can time travel all we want, but, like, you have to essentially do the math and move huge location, like, huge places, like, in time and space, because you're moving back to wherever the Earth was if you're trying to go back to the Earth. Right. Right. So, Whatever. That's uh, that's going on some crazy tangent, uh, <laughs> but I just I feel like, I mean maybe you could uh, boil it down to the energy is attached to some sort of physical ship. matter, mm-hmm. uh, in which case then the ship is there. Um, I don't know, but why? Well, that actually kind of uh, links back to something else that I'm going to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's another ghost that is also in a long white gown, and they're not sure if it's the same one. Okay. Or if it's a different one, but this one is seen descending the stairs of a cargo hold, okay. which is a super weird place for a guest to have been. Mm-hmm. Um, but what the like researchers and investigators think it might have been is that she's super attached to um, something that was in the cargo hold, uh, like a piece of furniture or uh-huh. something big. That would have, like, a car or something. Sure. And so she keeps going to the cargo hold because she's attached to something that was there. Okay, but it... Sure. Okay. So that's... that's uh, It ties back to what you were just saying, like, being tied to a specific thing. Again, that is attached to something that was there. Like, right. Like, not there any longer. Um... I don't know. And at that point, I think, I, I don't know. I don't feel like there's a a proper answer, uh, for it. So I don't even know what question to ask to get towards an answer. I know it's, this is something that you just take on faith, I guess, is one of those kind of things. Right. And I'm not much for taking on blind faith. I know you weren't. Um, So on the B deck, you can find the original third-class cabins that are now used as hotel rooms. Okay. Um, The long hallways of B deck were built on a curved, almost banana-like structure to help add stability to such a large ship. Mm -hmm. And because of this curve, the hallways feel almost like a funhouse. Oh, Which kind of adds to the general paranormal spookiness of the B-deck. I would love to go spend a night on this. How I much does too. it cost? <laughs> okay, I'm not sure how much regular rooms cost. I'll tell you how much this room that I'm about to talk about will cost here at the okay. end. Okay. Um, so the Queen Mary contains 12 decks. 
but B deck is known to be the most haunted. Sure. And in one room in particular is a hotbed of paranormal activity, and that's room B340. Mm-hmm. And this room was once originally three third-class state rooms, but has been remodeled to be one large room. Okay. And one spirit in this room creates poltergeist-type mayhem in the room. Oh. And it throws hangers and turns faucets off and on. And the spirit is that of a war bride. So there, there's two stories to who this war bride might be and why uh-huh. she might be there. Okay. Um, and both of them come from psychics. So take it. At As you uh, absolute value. Yeah. So she's a war bride. Okay. Uh, the first story is that she was leaving Europe and traveling to America to meet her American soldier husband. Mm-hmm. And she was pregnant and scared and alone. So she was afraid to leave the safety of her cabin. So she stayed alone in her room. Okay. And she went into labor. And because her pregnancy had been what we would call high risk today, yeah. she and the baby both died because they didn't have proper medical attention. Oh, that's not good. And so... She is sad and alone and never made it to her husband and her baby died. Right. And so she's a poltergeist in this room and that makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're going to believe in like poltergeists and ghosts and stuff like that is a reason to be angry, ghosty. Yeah. For yeah, sure. Proper. Uh, not because of um, ill medical. I can't think of a good way to phrase that. Uh, improper medical procedures. Sure. Or lack thereof. Yeah, really lack thereof. Um, The second story is that the woman was traveling with a child that was already born. And for some reason, she still refused or couldn't leave the cabin. Um, But she did end end up making it to America, where the soldier refused them and sent them back to Europe. Oh. And then, like, that story doesn't end with her dying or anything. So I'm kind of like... So did she live out a long life and then she was still so angry about being spurned that she ended up in this state room? I don't understand. Yeah. Like that doesn't that doesn't make as much sense to me as the woman who died in childbirth. Mm-hmm. Um the ship's logs have encounters dating back all the way to the final voyage in 1967. And it includes people knocking on the door at all hours of the night, the water faucets in the bathroom turning themselves on and off, and some have even reported that the blankets were pulled off their bed while they were sleeping, or a dark figure stood at the foot of their bed in the night. That is creepy. And that's that's all stuff that's, like, in the ship's logs that people who have been on the ship complained about. Oh. Yeah. So there's that. So last year, the Queen Mary opened room B340 to the public for overnight stays. It had closed it down for a long time because they were getting so many complaints. Uh Uh-huh. Like, they were getting so many paranormal complaints about this room that they were just like, fine, nobody stays here. Sure. And then last year, um, so the Queen Mary was part of a, um, um, a Ghost Adventures episode, or maybe it was Ghost Hunters, I can't remember, on Sci-Fi. And they were um, they were doing a paranormal investigation, and they were using B340. Mm-hmm. And they set up cameras and then left. And when they came back, they noticed that the, the sheep and the bed had been all messed up when they had been perfectly made before. Okay. So they went to the camera, and they noticed what seemed like the blankets moving by themselves on the bed. And they were, like, super excited, mm-hmm. as you would be. And then they noticed that there was, like a very slight jump in the video. Okay. And so, like, somebody had gone in and essentially, like, paused the video, moved the blankets, and then unpaused the video without the Uh. camera picking them. And so they were all really bummed because they were trying to figure out who, like, did this hoax because they were trying to do this real investigation. Right. I bet it was ship crew trying to get a little publicity. Well, what they actually think it was is that... um, there's like this society of of paranormal investigators and they actually think that it was this specific society so it wasn't the investigators who were working for sci-fi it was Uh the society that they teamed up with they actually think it was them oh because there was this there's this thing about um it couldn't have been done with the pause in the video like that without a remote for the camera Mm mm-hmm because if you had physically touched a button to pause it, you would have heard a beeping sound in the camera, in the footage. Okay. 
but there wasn't a beeping sound. And the only way to get away with not having the beeping sound is to have a remote. Okay. And because the cameras were owned by this society, it was then uh, assumed it had to have been somebody from this society who had with done that. Yeah, yeah, that makes mm-hmm. sense. So the paranormal investigators were really bummed, obviously. Yeah. Uh, all of that was part of the episode. Like, all of that was discussed in the episode, the fact that this was a hoax. And they were really upset about the fact that they thought they were going to get something real. And then they got people messing with it. And they were like, well, now everybody is going to question everything that happens on this ship, even though we have caught real stuff. Uh-huh. Everybody's just going to assume everything is a hoax because somebody had to mess with this one thing. Right. Um, so that garnered a bunch of attention. So in 2018, the Queen Mary opens up B340 to the public for overnight stays because what do you do when you garner a lot of attention? You make money off of it, right? Absolutely, yeah. So um, I think what's pretty great about this is actually the stay includes a special box of goodies intended to enhance your haunted experience. So you get oh, okay. a Ouija board, tarot cards, and a crystal ball. Oh, yeah. In a box while you stay in this room. And okay. the room is available starting at $499 a night. Oh, that's that's expensive, but it's not. Uh, I mean, that's pretty expensive. <laughs> it is. It is really expensive. With that um, being said, like you could definitely find regular hotel rooms that are much more expensive than that. Uh, well, if you're that going is... for like um, honeymoon suites and things at that scale, but uh, I guess it is kind of an experience too. Yeah. I'd be pretty bummed if I spent 500 bucks on a night in a uh haunted uh a haunted room and didn't get anything out of it. Okay, so I just looked it up and if we wanted to go and we went in the middle of the week, uh-huh. We could stay in a deluxe suite room with a king bed for $149 per night. Oh, that's not too bad. Which is really not bad at all. So no. maybe someday if we go on beach. Right. Um So the other ways that the Queen Mary is cashing in on her hauntings, Mm -hmm. um, they also offer a daytime haunted encounters tour that takes you through the areas with the most activity. Mm -hmm. And then they also offer nighttime tours, which I think is fucking cool. Uh, It includes a dining with the spirits package that has a first class group dining experience before a haunted history tour. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also a paranormal ship walk, which takes explorers through all the paranormal hotbeds on the ship. And they have a residential, uh, a resident paranormal investigator that offers tours and also offers a monthly lecture. Because it's like one of the, the country's only ongoing paranormal investigations where they just literally have their own paranormal investigator who does ongoing experiments and stuff on okay. all the hauntings. Uh-huh. And they offer monthly lectures with that person, and that person will also take you on a tour and help you, like, do paranormal investigation yourself. Oh, interesting. Yeah, which is kind of fun. Yeah. And I think that that all sounds like a really great time. Uh-huh. And I'd actually really love to be able to go do a tour and, like, stay on board someday. I think that would be so cool. Oh, I think that would be really fun. Like, even if we didn't, like have a haunting experience while we were there and just like it's such a cool like it's such got such a rich history mm-hmm. i think it would be i just think it'd be cool that's all yeah absolutely i think that would be that sounds really fun maybe uh if we ever end up doing it we can make a an episode out of it yeah maybe for our patrons that's a good idea. It's a great idea so that is what i have for you today all right i mean that's, that's pretty was- interesting Ghosties on a ship. Yeah, I thought this one was good. So thanks, Michael, for suggesting it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think the ship uh, Queen Mary or Grey Ghost or whatever you want to call her is a badass ship that did some badass stuff. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It needs to uh, uh, it needs to be parked in a location that it can still be uh, celebrated. Yeah, for sure. I think that's Mm -hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I think All that's right. it, right? Can, yeah, that's it. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at TTIS Podcast. If you like what we're doing, you can jump on over to iTunes, leave us a positive review. If you really like what we're doing, you can jump on over to Patreon, also TTIS Podcast over there. Get yourself some merch, get yourself some bonus content, get yourself early content, all the good things. If you'd just like to buy merch, it's thetruthissomewhere.threadless.com. 
show notes, links, all the interesting stuff is at thetruthissomewhere.com. And if you just want to drop a line, you can email us at thetruthissomewherepodcast at gmail.com. Also find us in the aforementioned Facebook group, uh, TTS Podcast Facebook group, where you can talk with me and Corey and other fans of the show, make suggestions, all that good stuff. Yeah. Yep, that's it. I think I got everything. Okay. Well, that was fun. Truth is somewhere, guys. Somewhere. Keep looking.